Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, or if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how I made this Game of Thrones book nook. There seems to be a dearth of Game of Thrones related book nukes out there, so I'm going to show you how I aim to remedy that. Now if this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome, and if it's something that you like, then uh, consider subscribing. That helps me out a ton. We broke the 500 mark now, and we are working our way to that coveted 1,000 subscribers. So, getting that out of the way, let's get uh, let's get straight into this. So the first thing I did, and probably the only time I actually had any sort of plan going into this, was to draw out sort of a two-dimensional plan as to where I want my gate and where the uh, where the frame's going to go within the tunnel itself. To make the tunnel, all you're going to need is a picture of some scaffolding and go to your local coffee shop and take all the stir sticks. Then it's just a case of snipping them down to basically the size I need and then I'm going to use this sheet to line everything up. The sheet itself is just a couple of pictures I stole off of the internet, uh, sorry, borrowed off of the internet. Um, some guy was wandering around with one of his buddies and accidentally stumbled across the Game of Thrones set, and he took a whole bunch of pictures. So what I did is I took a picture of the tunnel and then basically mirrored the uh, wooden beams inside and then just printed them out by themselves so that I get something of a uniform look to it. So these should be pretty similar to the tunnel scaffolding or pillars or whatever you would call them from the actual TV show. The tunnel is going to be made out of the same vinyl I used in my last video. This stuff is super versatile, it's easy to cut, it keeps its shape well, and it's white, so it actually kind of looks snowy already. So all I'm going to do is fold it around one piece so that I can get the general measurement for how long I need it, and then I'll cut it down to the right size. Do the same thing for the bottom. And then what I want to do is paint it white so that it is a little bit snowier. It's got kind of an off-white yellowish color underneath. So what this will do is highlight it to make it look more like packed snow. And a little hot glue will stick that in place. And then once I've got that, on the bottom and it's hardened, I can go on to painting my uh, beams. Now, it's wood, they're just made out of stir sticks, so they've already got a really good texture, but I wanted to darken them up some, so I just put a little bit of brown terra paint onto it and then rubbed in a little bit of a dark black wash, and then that gave it a nice weathered effect. Did the same thing to the rest of them, and then they're ready to place down. I marked out ahead of time where I wanted them to go, so that's just a case of gluing them down. So a couple beads of hot glue in place will hold them so that they are all set. And then once I've done that, I can come back through and cut a couple more sticks just to give it a bit more of a, a base around the bottom. Now is not the time to be stingy with the hot glue, so I use a whole lot of it to hold it all in place and ensure that the weight of the vinyl roof isn't going to distort those beams at all. Then, before I add any of this stuff on the outside, I want to make sure that I've got the center of it all covered up nicely. So a thick layer of Mod Podge and then a healthy dosing of fake snow. So I throw that everywhere, dust it off, and you can see the difference between where the snow hits and where the actual white was underneath. And then I wanted to add sort of a muddy brown to it. This made me more than a little panicked because, <laughs> because that's, that is some brown snow, like questionably brown snow. But then I told myself, if they're gonna be walking out of like Castle Black, then they're probably gonna be pretty muddy. So as long as it's mixed in pretty well and I press it down so it looks like little footprints, um, it's, it's probably gonna look pretty good. But yeah, that's real muddy. If I could go back, I probably would have made it a little less dark or maybe a little less brown. I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, but it turned out pretty well once it dried, and it definitely looks like it's been used. You wouldn't want perfectly white snow along there, so I am actually kind of happy with how that turned out. Attaching the cave roof outer 
tunnel thing is just a couple beads of hot glue around the edge and then it's just held in place while it dries. But it's already starting to look pretty good at this point so all I need to do are add some lights. So you can see I've really, uh, really thought this through and lined it up. Basically I'm looking to see whether I'm hitting the pillar or not. I'd say three out of four shots it didn't but uh, you know one in four is a pretty good ratio. The lights themselves are just these tiny micro LEDs that I have strung in a series and then I painted the part that sticks out brown and then I painted the actual light itself red. So once they were through, it's just a case of pressing them up so they've got sort of a torchy look to it and that is pretty much it for the lighting. So I glued the battery packs on top, kept them out of the way as best as I could and then I was on to making the wall itself This is a pretty impressive chunk of styrofoam. Looking back, I'm not quite sure why I made it so thick. Uh, it definitely didn't need to be this thick, but this is the nicest stuff that I have. And I just kind of wanted to use some of it up. I'm running out of space in this small shop I have. So I'm just trying to use up the larger chunks of material that I've got lying around. Then it was just a case of cutting out that concave shape uh, which sucked because I don't have any tools that are particularly useful for this so it was just cutting relief bits and then tearing and then pulling and then tearing um, and it kind of got to the right shape now I did lose all of the video of me actually cutting all the grooves and everything into the top of it or into the front of it um, and I apologize for that but that's what you get for working on a camera that is 10 years old it's a nice camera but probably 10% of my footage gets lost. This is just me filling in the cracks with wood filler. This is stuff I've used in the past. It's super lightweight and it's very flexible, which means that it uh, it's easy to get into places. And if you're putting it on something that has a bit of flex to it, you don't need to worry too much about it cracking or snapping off. So just a liberal coating everywhere. And then I put a lot of it on the bottom too. I'm gonna go back over this with some flock, um, some fake snow but I wanted to build it up just to give it a nice shape. Then I wanted to paint everything. So I went with like a really light blue. Uh, it, I figured this would look great for making it look like a sheet of ice. I can't remember now if it's actually ice or snow, but I thought the ice would look kind of cool and it gave me a chance to try something new. Like I've never painted ice before. So this was kind of a fun change in colors. It's the same process, it's just a really thick layer of blue and then a very heavy brushing of just white over top to highlight all those cracks and gouges. You can't really go too overboard with the white on this. The less blue, the less icy it looks, the more snowy it looks, so just go until you're basically happy with it. I painted the walls there blue, but I'll go back through and paint them black just to uh, give it a bit of a darker look. Once that was done, it is on to the gate. I wanted to make a gate that actually works. So I took a bit of this Obesh I have, which is a really nice, it's a hardwood, but it's super, super soft, which means it's really easy to manipulate, basically just using sharp edges. So this is a Japanese um, marking gauge. It's basically a little knife stuck in a ruler attached to a fence, so you can cut uh, uniform pieces all the way across which I then used to make a couple pieces for the side and then I'll make one on the front and the back and that'll give me sort of a friction fit gate. Now this is all held together using super glue, which is not a great glue if you're gonna be using wood, but I didn't have the patience and because I try to get these videos out once a week, I didn't wanna wait for wood glue to dry, so I just used the super glue. As far as the fit works, I mean, it, it worked out pretty well. So all I needed to do was cut all my pieces down to a uniform size, and then using my itty bitty tiny plane, I'll take the uh, the sharp edges off and flatten everything out. A couple braces on the top and the bottom will hold it all in place so that I know the width. And then once that's done, I can get started on making the gate a little bit more gate, gatey, gate-like. Make it look a bit more like a gate. Not a whole lot of plan going into this, just cutting pieces and slapping them on sort of uh, haphazardly. 
And then once I found the center, I knew I wanted that little peephole in the middle, so I've just chopped that out. Again, I'm not too concerned about it being perfectly square because I'm going to put some more bits of the stir sticks over top to kind of hide any, uh, any loose edges. The grate on the back are just a couple pieces of wire that I've cut down to size. I think these were used on an armature that I didn't actually end up using. So I've just chopped those off and then a very liberal coating of super glue will hold all those in place. They don't need to look pretty because they're going to be hidden in the back anyways. And then it's on to painting this. Same idea. I want to give this a lot of a darker look to it. So I'm actually going to paint it dark brown. And then I will go over the entire thing again with a couple different washes. Um, I'll use some black dry brushing over the entire surface to give it a really weathered, worn look. And then I'll do the same thing with some washes just to, uh, to give it a very weathered, used outdoor look. Then the last step, because you've added that paint on, I want to make sure it's still got a, a, a sort of a loose fit on the gate. So I'll sand all the edges down and then fit it to make sure that it still goes up and down. But it's looking pretty good at this point. A little bit of wax in there helps it slide a little bit easier as well. But I also want it to be able to stay up so you can move it wherever you want. Pop that into place and then check to make sure that it, uh, it still moves so I haven't glued anything together. So. Then it's on to the final stage as far as the body's concerned, so I'm just going to add a bunch of snow. So I threw lots of snow down onto the bottom, and then I'll do the exact same thing on the gate itself. This was just sprinkling it, and then I'll get a little bit on my finger to rub it in so it looks like it's uh, snow blown, and then I just start throwing it. I wasn't sure what I was doing at this point, but I knew I wanted it very snowy. Once it had dried, it was actually looking uh, looking really good. I like to finish any of these things with a frame that is relevant to the piece. So with the Hobbit book nook, I wanted sort of a dwarven frame. Uh, for this one, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to go with. So I got a little bit more of my flooring and then added some of the uh, wood filler around the edge or hole filler. I guess not really wood filler. It's just this gap filler. Then once this stuff dries a nice white, I'm going to go over the entire thing with a Mod Podge and sprinkle on some more of the snow flock. And then that is essentially it done. Once it's dried and I'm glued it on, that's the entire nook finished. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I wanted to try something a little bit different. As much as I love book nooks, they are done to death. So it is fun for me to try and come up with something that is a little bit different and not necessarily something you're going to see everywhere else. So if this uh, was something you like, leave me a comment, hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video. All these things do wonders as far as helping me out. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll see you back here next week. Cheers.